croeso the money and mind e summit plan gadar the linear we're going to move on with our design um e gray uh sheen orthographic to produce an orthographic drawing of this lathe tool that you've already drawn so the next step is to uh, once we've drawn in 3d is to actually produce a, a 2d orthographic we go down to this bottom left corner insert a new element the big plus sign and we create a drawing now then when you start off for the first time it's worth going to the custom template and then if you pick AMC, sorry, ISO, ISO, language is English, so you need to change these settings, A4, millimetres, and we always draw in third angle projection, that's really important, okay, third angle projection, and we put four zones around our border so we can identify different parts of the drawing. Okay. Just wait a second. Now, if you're not sure, please uh, pause and uh, stop the video so you can have a look to see um, which settings I just picked there. Fab, there we are. And that gives us now an engineering drawing uh, block and it's already assuming that I want to draw an engineering drawing of the part that I've just worked on, part one in part studio. So if I click on part one, and it's assuming that I want to draw it from the front where I started drawing the, the 3D part. So I'm going to just click here, and it's picked the scale of one to one, which means that it will draw it at full scale, full size, on the A4 piece of paper that I've picked. I'm going to draw, drop that there, just click. And I'm going to drag to the right, click again. And that's going to give us the side view of the part there. I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to click this initial view, click and drag up. And that'll give us a top view. And that's a plan view looking down at the part that we've just drawn. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to click the initial drawing and drag up here to the top right. And that's going to give me an isometric view of the part. Okay, so we've got all our views really quickly. Okay, and it's done that all automatically for us from. Um, the initial part that we drew in 3D back in Part Studio. And if we want to go back at any time to check what our part looks like, we can just click on Part Studio at the bottom. And there we are, that's the part there. And then I can just flick back and forth whenever I like to the drawing. So, um, so this shows all the information we want, okay? It's done it in a solid view. If I wanted to show these holes coming through as hidden detail, I just right click. Sorry, escape, get rid of that tool. Just press escape on the keyboard. Right click. And then I can show hidden lines. And if I show hidden lines, It'll update and it'll show all of these hidden lines, the holes and all the features that come through the part. So it's a, an actual view as I'd like an engineering view to look like. I'll do the same here and um, show hidden lines. And I'll do the same at the top as well. There we are. There's not many hidden lines there, it's all shown. And for the isometric view, I'm just going to leave that as is because that's um, just a pictorial view. So we can understand what this part is when we come to make it. And it'll give us a little bit more understanding, makes it easier to, to read. Fab. Okay. So now we want to drop in some uh, dimensions on this. So when, if we were give, to give this drawing to somebody to make the part, 
then they'd need dimensions and need to know what size is to make everything. So in the top bar here, there's a dimension tool, just like you used when you were modeling. Click, and if I zoom in, just using the wheel to zoom in a little bit, I can pick the edges of the parts. So I know it's 75 long. I'm going to drag across with my right mouse button. I'm going to pick this line, and this line. And can you see there that little dotted line? Just to keep everything nice and tidy, it makes them all line up as well. And the height. So that's the overall sizes of the part. Um, I'll add some more dimensions in from the bottom to here. Is 12. I know that the cutout is 14. Again, it's going to align those. And I know that the depth of the slot here is 12. Try to put all your dimensions outside the part. Okay, I would never put my, just to show what's considered bad practice, is to put my dimension in there. Okay, and that clutters the drawing up quite a bit and makes it quite messy. So all the dimensions should be outside the part. So I'm just going to press escape, click on the dimension and delete on my keyboard. And I can delete the dimensions there. So we've got the dimensions now for the height of the part, the width and the length. And I've got dimensions for this slot cut out here. So I'm going to move on up to this plan view to dimension the holes and the um, the trapezoidal cut out there for the tool holder. So I'll just drag down. Actually, I'm going to move this view down a little bit and zoom in. So again, back to my dimension tool. There to there. The point to point. And I need the angle of this cutout. So the angle, if I just pick these two lines, it changes to an angle dimension automatically. Like that. So we know that the cutout is 20 millimeters from the end. This narrow opening here is 35 long, and this angle is 60. I'm going to assume that whoever's reading this, because I'm not going to dimension that, they're going to assume that these two are the same. Okay. Um, now to dimension the centers of the holes, or the positions of the holes, we're going to need center lines. And I'm going to use here center mark tool. And I'm just going to click, 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 click. And that gives me a center line for each of these. Just move the drawing up a bit so I've got some room to draw here. Back to the dimension tool. And I'm going to go from the edge to that center point mark, 8. And 22, and this one here was halfway, 37.5. Good, okay. Now then, I could carry on and dimension these two as well, um, but their positions aren't absolutely critical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this dimension, and it gives me a few options. So I'm going to put down under the 8 there. TYP, typical. So then whoever's making this part will know that that 8 typical is inferred to be 8 the same this side as well. It's a little bit cluttered so I'm going to drag that down to there and I'm going to drag this down a little bit. So we, there we are. And the 22 is going to be the same. Double click. Typical. There. So we've got dimensions 8 and 22, and they're typical, so they'd be the same. This side, 37.5 there. So the only dimension I need to add is this one at the bottom, from there to the centre of the hole. Oh, that didn't work, sorry. Press escape, delete, 
try again. Bottom of the hole to that center point there. There we are, six. That center point there, drag out, and that's eight. Notice how I'm dragging all of my dimensions outside the part. Okay, that's really important. So if I zoom all using my wheel. So I've got most of my dimensions on there. I think I've got everything on there. A few notes now to whoever's making this. So if I click on the letter A here, that's a note tool. I'm gonna put a note on the side here. Just click and drag. And I'm gonna say uh, one millimeter chamfer all edges click off okay so that note then and escape to finish that tool so that note there and move it so it's there we are to there um there we are so i've got a note there so one millimeter chamfer all round to take away all the sharp edges two more details that i forgot to add actually i need to add the whole details for these. We need to know what these whole dimensions are because when we modeled this, we modeled threaded holes. And if I zoom in a little bit, this got the engineering convention there for an internal thread. You can see that as a broken line around here. So I'm going to here pick on whole call out, whole detail. I'm just going to click on there, drag out, and that whole detail tells us all the information we need. Okay, it tells the engineer who's going to make this to drill at 6.8 and then to tap the hole to cut the thread M8 by 1.25. Same again here. I think my internet connection is a little bit slow. There we are. Okay. Click on there, and this is the same. M10 by one millimeter thread, 10 millimeters deep, because that's what we specified when we modeled this. Okay, 10 millimeters deep, and it tells the engineer to drill it nine millimeters diameter, 10 deep. And that's shown just underneath here, that it doesn't go all the way through. It's a blind hole, it stops 10 millimeters deep, okay? These M8 by 1.25, they go all the way through, and the hidden detail actually shows that for us there. There we are. Um, the drawing block at the bottom contains lots of information. If I zoom in, it tells me that I've drawn this. It's my drawing, Ale Davis, and it says the date there when I've drawn it. And I can add more information here. So if I just click on here, I can type in here lathe tool holder, and the part number is 250-101, and click off. So there's some more lines here that I can just get rid of, click delete that, uh, click, so let's click off there for a minute, there we are, so that's the title there, and we can fill in lots of other details as well, material is going to be mild steel, double click, mild steel, and there's no finish, unless you wanted to, you could specify a paint finish or something on there. And there we have it. In less than 15 minutes, a fully dimensioned orthographic drawing ready to go for manufacture. I hope that helps. Now um, you have a go at making this yourself. Okay? Diochenvaur, Pobruk.